Learning objective five. In session three, we're going to look at how to use uh, financial statement information, all of this information. We can use it to uh, compare our position to others in the industry, compare our position of the, our company to other aspirant firms, and use it for other performance analyses. We have an income statement, we have a balance sheet, we have a cash flow statement of cash flows. Now we have all these ratios. How do we use this information? to our greatest advantage. Well, a lot of times uh, this, all of this data is used internally for performance evaluations. So someday your raise may be determined by return on equity or net return on sales. So uh, executives, the president, CEO, and the board will use these uh, ratios to evaluate your performance in the company. We look at these ratios and, and financial statements for future planning. We're gonna get into that in session number four. Um, where we use ratios going forward. And if, in other words, if we have this net return on sales this past quarter, we can do it again next quarter, kind of thinking goes on. Uh, we look at comparing divisions. So this division, division A versus division B, is one accretive to earnings, one uh, not doing so well relative to division B, not doing so well relative to division A. Uh, or doing better. So we look at uh, this on a comparison basis inside the company and also salary decisions. Uh, as I said, externally, we look at evaluate, we, we might evaluate a supplier to see how uh, sound they are with short-term solvency. Are they able to stay in business and keep the supply chain fulfilled for us? Very important to us. So we look at their financial statements to see if they're strong financially and will be a, a, a formidable supplier for our uh, goods, and, goods and services that we need to succeed ourselves. How are our competitors doing? So a lot of comparison goes on within industry and across industries with aspirin companies. Who's doing the best in inventory management and receivable management and cash flow? Uh, we want to know who that aspirin company is and then uh, mimic them and find out what they're doing better than we are and the way we can do that is by looking at these ratios. Uh, if we go to acquire another firm, again, are these accretive to earnings? Is this company going to be help our earnings out, going to dilute our earnings? What are they going to do? How are their ratios and how do they stack up against ours? Do they have positive net income, positive profitability ratio, or will they uh, drag us down? Is their debt too large? What's their debt to equity ratio? So a lot of these ratios are used once again when we look at acquisitions. And other outside parties look at us. Creditors might look at us, potential investors in our company, look at our ROE. What kind of return on investment will we provide? What is our PE ratio um, relative to others in the industry and how do we measure up. So outside investors and analysts will use these ratios and the financial statements to judge us. Uh, we can look at all of these things on a time trend basis. Uh, how have we done over time, over the last 10 years? Have our sales gone up? Have they gone down? Has it been a bumpy road? Um, what's our cash position doing? For instance, Apple Computer, another example of Apple, but they're constantly building their cash short up now around $40 billion. You can do a lot with $40 billion. Uh, so we can look at this over time. Was it that good 10 years ago? And where will it be in the future? We're going to get into that in session four. And also peer group. How are we doing relative to our peers? We can look uh, by SIC code, which is now called NAICS code, North American Industry Classification System, uh, replace the SIC codes in 1997, and we can look at how our peers are doing within our standard industrial classification. Um, a company named Robert Morris Associates, now called Risk Management Associates, puts all these ratios together uh, within peer groups, within SIC codes, NAICS codes, and uh, we're able to see again how we're doing within our industry. Uh, Risk Management Associates puts that all together by size of company. So small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies within our industry is all put together by RMA. Um, Lots of possible complications. There's no underlying theory to tell us and no benchmarks. Uh, we kind of have to look at our industry. Uh, some of these ratios are indeed industry dependent and we have to know what, how our industry is doing uh, relative to us. And uh, other than a few guidelines, again, it's, it kind of depends on uh, what is a good ratio and what is a not so good ratio. In summary, in session number three, you should have gotten three, uh, five, I'm sorry, five key learning objectives out of this uh, session. First, cash flows and the importance of cash flows relative to our other financial statements. Um, second, standardizing financial statements, how to standardize an income statement, and you should know now how to standardize a balance sheet. Uh, you should know the key ratios that are used across industries around the world uh, and, and in their uh, 
four or five key categories, five key categories that we went over. Uh, fourth learning objective was the DuPont identity, how to break down a measure of uh, net return on equity into three pieces and use, the, use that analysis to help you improve your net return on equity equation and position. And finally, what do we use all this financial statement information for? Again, it's mostly for performance analysis and uh, comparisons with other companies in your industry and out. Hopefully you've enjoyed session number three of Introduction to Finance.